Real Questions, Bible Answers is presented by Grandpa's Bible, moderated by Bruce Harrell and Will Fraser, and hosted by Thurman Adams at Echo Effect in downtown Shelbyville, Indiana. Links to their websites are below. Click on more to see the scripture that was referenced for this question. How can I forgive someone who has hurt me so bad? Our example is Christ, and as he was being punished and crucified and tormented, spat on, all that, he prayed to the Father to forgive them. We also discussed that forgiveness is more for the person forgiving because it frees you from that burden. It frees you from carrying it around. If you can't forgive someone, then you can't understand true forgiveness. And forgiveness sometimes is a process. If you truly have a problem with someone and you really need to dig deep and remember all that Jesus did for us on the cross. For me, being as wicked of a person as I was, it's very easy for me to forgive somebody of anything because I realize what God saved me from, like horrible, wicked lifestyle. So every time if I think of that, I start each day new you just pray, mercies are new for me every day. I'm going to pour those mercies out into the world to everybody else. And I love the fact that they're saying that it's a, sometimes you have to keep going back. You have to keep reminding yourself that you forgave. Which is where I'm going to start because that's what the 77 times I think represents that process. And I truly believe forgiveness helps the forgiver, forgiver with um, peace of heart, peace of mind. And um, my reactions also is a testimony to others. I'm going to use an example here on forgiveness. Um, my dad got remarried in 72, and his wife said, you either pick me or you pick Carrie. And he picked her. So for, um, I don't know. 25 years, I never saw my dad. The day she died, he called me and said, she's dead. Will you come see me? Oh, wow. And I did. Mm -hmm. And so he asked me one night, he said, how can you forgive me for everything that I've done wrong in this relationship? And I told him, I said, dad, how can I not? I've been given, forgiven for so much more. How could I not forgive you? And uh, so I turned it into a testimony instead of being a little bratty kid, which I could have been. And then um, my dad and I had seven years together before he died, and we had a great relationship those seven years. You just can't hold grudges. Now, did you have to constantly go back there and remind yourself, or was it gone? It was gone. God took it. Jenny was saying that uh, there was someone that had hurt her feelings for a a period of time and she said finally she just had to confront them and I think a lot of times you have to confront the situation that is the problem and actually have a conversation because a lot of the f people that hurt you don't even realize they're hurting you. Sometimes you have to. You have to for forgive someone who has never sought forgiveness. You forgive them in your heart and just go on. Going back to her story about her dad, um, I have the same situation with my biological mother. She, uh, the whole time I was growing up, she didn't want to have anything to do with us. She always complained, don't ever have kids, they'll ruin your life. And she'd say over and over, she was, she was six feet under. And when, when I was growing up, I told myself I was never going to be like her. I wasn't going to do the things she did. But as I, but as I matured, and, and I, especially since I've, I uh, found Christ, I, I don't, I have never held that against her. And I've told Brad to this day, I, I, we've tried to get a hold of her. We've went and visited her in Florida and she will not reciprocate. And I've sent her a letter with a return uh, envelope with a stamp on it to try to get her to communicate with me. And she didn't ever respond. So, and I, but I've told Brad, if that woman was to call me today, I would be right there with her. Tammy, you had mentioned something about your testimony. Well, um, it, would, it would have to be someone, a testimony to someone who knows the situation. And a lot of times in families, everybody knows the situation. Um, not so much, and, and probably a, a group at church, not the whole church, hopefully. <laughs> oh, yeah.
<laughs> but um, yeah, family. I was my mindset was family at that time um, because family's forever, and you know everything that goes on with everyone, and it's a testimony, especially if the conflict is within family. Yeah, and people are always watching you, aren't they? Yes. You know, so she's making that forgiveness a sacrifice for others, and sometimes you just have to do that. It's amazing the people that you don't know are watching you whose lives are going to be changed one way or the other based upon the fact that you say, I'm a Christian, yeah. but I'm not going to forgive. Wow. Or I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. and you know how much I've been hurt. I'm going to show loving things to this person anyway. We have to remember the Holy Spirit will help us to forgive somebody. And Christ has given us a great example. But the parable of the unmerciful servant in Matthew 18, um, you can read that and then ask people which person they actually portray. You know, it's like... Um, you drinking poison and expecting the other person to be hurt by it when you don't forgive. Ooh. Yeah. You brought it up over here, Don. I think it was the idea that this is a process, isn't it? It, is, it doesn't always happen as easily, and I'm sure Carrie had struggles you know, with where can I put this? And she was able to find a category for it, a box for it, put it in the box, put the box on the shelf and move on. When my father was dying, I had been estranged from him for a long time, and he had done a lot of hurtful things. And he had reached out, and he had lived in West Virginia at the time and, and wanted, wanted to reconcile before he passed away. And so I agreed to go out there and meet him, and I thought that I had forgiven him. And I went with my aunt, and... I thought that I'd forgiven him, but when I saw him, like all those feelings from childhood came back up, and I realized, even though I thought I had, I really hadn't, and so I probably went through that like five or six times, where I thought I had completed the whole forgiveness process and gone through it all, but I really hadn't, and I really was not able to do it on my own, so... I just said it was like a process that I had to go through where I had to make a decision that, yes, I'm going to forgive him because Christ has forgiven me. So I'm going to forgive my dad. And so anyway, it took a while, but I did it. And since everything for me is a song, I want to recommend a song for you guys if you guys are struggling with forgiveness at all. It's a song by Rascal Flats called Things That Matter. Just go home, listen to that one, spend some time, and that just breaks your heart. You guys have mentioned uh, a couple times about having conversations clear in the air, which is amazing. If you have kids, you know that you have kids that come to you, they're complaining about something their siblings done, and you know you ask them, have you talked to them about it? And they're like, no. And, and there are times that somebody hurts us and we're not sure if they did. And then there are times somebody hurt us and we know they knew they hurt us. Um, and having conversations are healthy. Um, they don't happen a lot, or at least it doesn't seem like it. What gets in the way of having those conversations if it leads to healthiness? Um, and how can we break through to have those conversations with people who've hurt us? Pride gets in the way a lot of times. Just lowering yourself to humble yourself to go to that person and confess that, you know, yeah, I did that and I'm sorry and, you know, just get it out and, you know, make things better. And I, and I speak from that because I've had to do that. To um, ask somebody to tell them you were hurt or to... No, did they, okay. I hurt them. Okay. My, my sister years ago... She just royally tripped my trigger, and I said, I hate you. And uh, after a couple of days of fighting with that, I had to go to her and tell her 
that I did not mean that. That you know, I was I was in a place where it just really just set me off and and that I was sorry and and we made things right and and you know, things are okay today. And sometimes the other person isn't willing to forgive you, are they? What do you do when you apologize and ask for their forgiveness and they say no? I think it's money. You offer money, they'll forgive you. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, the word says that as much as it's up to you, live at peace with other people. You can't control their responses, um, so you move on. One thing is, I, I heard this once, that forgiveness is visually taking your foot off their neck. Before that time, you want to stomp them while they're down. But you have decided, and it's not my place, I'm going to forgive them, and you remove your foot. Uh, my mom had to have open-heart surgery when she was 77, and then she couldn't take care of my dad. He had Parkinson, and so we had to put him in a nursing home, and he never forgave me for that. He he held that against me, and I used to go visit him every day, but he was always mad at me. But uh, I did forgive him for all that, but but every day he was so upset with me because I'd put him there, and he said, well, I took care of my dad when he was elderly. You should take care of me. Well, my wife and I was both working, and we couldn't, but he he held that against me for uh, until I passed away, but I forgave him for all that. But also remember that if it's something they've done to you that's maybe ungodly, um, you have to remember that, you know, God is for us. And one way or another, he's going to make that person be responsible for what they've done. And he'll take care of these other people that are doing things that maybe is totally ungodly. And I just, you know, that's one of those where you just hand it over to Christ. <laughs> I think the common theme here is that nobody is free from pain. Right. We've all experienced pain, trauma, neglect, and oftentimes from the ones who are supposed to love us, be in relationship with us, and know us. And, um, and that's why the gospel is so dang important. Because while we were still sinners, what did Christ do? He died for us. And we have that ability to be forgiven, to spend eternity with the Heavenly Father, and to have the peace and the Holy Spirit with us. And um, man, I, can't, I, I can only imagine there's probably people out there, viewers, you've got a lot that you've got going on. And uh, my encouragement is just to find that freedom in forgiveness. Um, because the thing that forgiveness does, it, it, it gives room, well, one, you know, unforgiveness is boulders lodged in your heart. Your heart's not beating right. And you never really punish the other person by not forgiving them. Um, but humbling yourself, risking the conversation to say, hey, I've been hurt, and to work on that gives God an opportunity to shine, to walk in faith, to see what reconciliation could look like. And he might provide that, he might not. But if you've been faithful to do the things that you need to do, then he's happy with you. He's well done. And before you go on, Lord, let me just pray for these people, my brothers and sisters, because you have said in your word to cast our cares on you because you care for us, and I do believe that's hurts as well. So we've all been hurt. And Lord, I just lift them up to you, and I know that you want hearts that are complete and full. So whatever that takes, Lord, a repeat prayer, a repetitive action, whatever it takes, Lord, to help us to receive your forgiveness, whether that's going to that person, I just ask you to speak now to every heart, you know, to heal us. That's You're in the business of healing and restoration and comforting. So when we don't accept the forgiveness or extend forgiveness to others, I feel like we're getting in your position there. You've said that you are the one who will repay. Vengeance is yours. So help us to be more like you. And I just pray for all these people in the room. In Jesus' name, amen.
Unforgiveness takes all kinds of forms, like holding on to grudges and being resentful or harboring ill thoughts toward those who have been spiteful or unkind to us. Most of all, unforgiveness is a form of sinful pride that quenches God's grace. Our ability to communicate and to connect with others and with God becomes hindered. It's a bit like listening to music through tangled earphones. Attempting to use the earphones without untangling them is cumbersome and ineffective, much like trying to live a fruitful life while entangled with unforgiveness. The process of untangling requires patience, careful handling, and a willingness to address each knot one at a time. Likewise, forgiveness often involves patiently working through our feelings, understanding the root of our hurt, and then gradually loosening the knots of bitterness and anger one at a time. Once the earphones are untangled, they function as intended, providing a clear pathway for sound. In the same way, once we address and untangle our feelings of unforgiveness and our hearts and minds are clearer, we can then communicate better and connect more deeply with others and experience the fullness of our relationship with God unimpeded by the distortions of unresolved resentment. Forgiveness does not require restoration, but it does require releasing the other person from what they owe you and choosing to never bring it up again. No matter how many times it happens, it is as if it never happened before. Forgiveness is a process that is never complete unless it is started, and it always starts with you.